Hi everyone, uh, my name is Michael and I'm a first year MD PhD student at the University of Pennsylvania. Um, this is kind of like a follow-up to my, I guess, previous video on kind of like the study tips that I used in college. You might notice that I'm wearing the same shirt. I, I promise you I have more than one shirt in my closet. It's just I'm filming in the same like session, I guess. So anyways, um, basically this video is just going to kind of focus on um, some of the study t techniques that I think have been particularly effective for me during my first year of med school. I guess some things to note that might be helpful are one, um, like so Penn's uh, preclinical coursework, which is what I'm taking right now, is all pass fail. And so that allows for like some degree of like flexibility and like uh, I don't have to get like everything like perfectly correct um, on like exams and things like that. Um, and another thing is that it is preclinical, right? So a lot of it is kind of like standard like book work. I don't know how my study techniques will change like during, for example, my clerkship years. I can only really speak as like a first year, first time medical student. So um, without further ado, let's jump right into it. Okay, so number one, uh, I, I, I kind of do want to talk a little bit about maybe it's like some of the software that I use um, and in terms of like, you know, study tools and, and things that are on my laptop. It, it's kind of difficult because I think I, I spent a lot of this term, um, this semester kind of figuring out like what exactly worked for me because honestly, I didn't really know at the beginning. Um, I studied physics in college, so going into like uh, like med school, it's a very different type of studying. I'm st I don't think I'm still even used to like um, how med school studying works, and so I'm still kind of like figuring things out. But I can at least talk about a little bit about things that have worked so far and the things that haven't really worked for me personally. The thing that I like most, which is really strange, is actually Google Docs. Um, when I do need to take notes for classes, uh, strangely enough, I just I, I think Google Docs like works perfectly for me. Um, it's free. I also have multiple devices, so it allows for easy like synchronization uh, between different laptops and things like that that I have. So that's very convenient for me. Obviously, I think every medical student uses Anki. So uh, for those of you who may not know, Anki is basically like a spaced repetition um, like flashcard software that will automatically tell you like when you need to study like certain flashcards. Um, and so if there are like certain things that I like have to memorize for, for classes, um, typically, I just use Anki. And another software that I personally kind of liked was uh, something called Bear. So um, I think it's exclusive to uh, MacBooks, at least I, I don't know about Windows versions and things like that. But uh, it's basically like a markdown editor um, that allows me to like quickly type up notes because I'm uh, pretty familiar with markdown previously. So um, I personally really like it. The one thing I, I don't know if I like too much is if I want to put in images, it doesn't like it looks really small for some reason on their platform, but in general, I found I, I, I was using it a lot, especially at the beginning. I do also want to talk about Notion. So I, I don't know, I, I tried it for a bit. I think a lot of people really like it. And, and that's kind of why I, I you know, initially was, was really interested in it. Um, and it's like really cool. I, I definitely think it's like a really good product. But the thing is, like, I just don't think it works for me. I think it has like kind of too many layers of like customizability and like you know to like you know pre for templates and, and things like that and you know that's definitely super effective for people that are much better planners than me and and that like to plan out every aspect of their day and like what else that, that they need to study and like categorize things and whatnot um, but for me I think I'm more of like a like a free form studier like uh, like my Google Docs are very like just kind of like all over the place. So I think the, uh, the the features that Notion offers and the things that people like about them is just something that just doesn't really flow with my general like line of work. Yeah, those are some of the software that I particularly enjoyed, I guess. Um, I'm still figuring out like other things that I like as well, but um, those are the things that come to mind right now. I think one thing that has been pretty effective for me so far that I kind of took from my like physics training um, like in undergrad was that you don't have to really memorize everything. I, I, I think there's like a general like stereotype around med school where like, oh, you have to memorize everything. There's so many like, like detailed minutiae, but um, really I think there are some aspects of it where you don't have to memorize too much. You can kind of like reason through like what the correct answer should be. So to give you guys maybe like a concrete example. So one thing that we learned in our first anatomy block uh, this past semester was basically like fetal circulation, right? So how does blood flow work between the placenta and the baby? Um, and I think a, it, it looks complicated at first, but if you truly understand like, okay, if I were like some hypothetical person and I was like designing fetal circulation and like a baby from scratch, like how would I do it, right? And you can actually explain a lot of like the structures that you see later on in life. For example, like this 
might not make sense to like people not in medical school right now, but like the ductus arteriosus, ductus venosus, it's like a foramen in the heart. What is that called? Like foramen ovale in the heart or something. But uh, basically all of those things actually really make sense if you think about how do I maximize oxygenation and you know, how, how, do I, how do I get oxygenated blood to like the baby's heart like as fast as I can. I, I think evolution is really cool, I think personally in, in that you can really explain it a lot by like, how would you do it? Like how would you optimize the system perfectly? Because I, I think kind of like over thousands of years, like hundreds of thousands of years, like evolution has kind of like figured out what, how to do things like most optimally. So I think that's a really cool part of like biology in general. And it also saves you like from having to memorize a lot of things because if you know the reasoning behind it, you can kind of reason through and get to the correct answer on like tests and things like that as well. But you know, of course, I'm not gonna lie, a majority of things in medical school are simply you just have to memorize, right? Um, and so for those cases, I'm not a good like memorizer by any like way, meter form. So um, I think for me, what's really worked is like mnemonics in general. And I think just like really stupid mnemonics, like things that are just really memorable, things that like easily come to your mind, like when you like see something first for the first time, like, you know, inventing like a situation in your head that um, kind of like painting a picture and kind of like, you know, uh, developing like a corresponding mnemonic. For me, that personally works because some things, it just seems like there's no rhyme or reason, or at least I haven't figured it out myself. And so I just have to like memorize it for the test, obviously. Um, and so mnemonics have been like a really effective way for me to do that. I think a lot of people also typically have like pre-made mnemonics that you might find on like the internet. In general, I think those don't often stick with me that well because the way that mnemonics are formed are like you have this picture in your head and then you come up with a mnemonic like because of that. But if I don't have that picture in my head, um, it's really difficult for that mnemonic to stick, if that makes sense. And that also brings me uh, to my next point, which is, I think it's really important to figure out like how you learn best. Um, because even though like we all learn like the same material, I think everyone has their own way of studying. So for example, for me, I've always known for like, you know, since college, I guess that I'm a very like spatial, spatially oriented learner. And so um, I have to have like a very good picture of like what's happening. And for example, like the human body, or even just having like the mind map of like um, like how things are related to one another. So for example, it's especially pertinent for like biochemistry or like microbiology. For me, like once I have that picture down and I can like kind of like redraw it in my head like multiple times, um, it's very difficult for me to forget. So for some people that method works great, like for myself, for instance, but for other people, it, it doesn't work at all, right? And so it's really important to figure out like, are you like, a, I, I don't know what the different learning types are, like kinetic learner or like, you need to like write things down, take notes, have to like write down notes like multiple times, for instance. I think it's important to figure those things out if you can before medical school, but sometimes it's a little bit difficult. Um, and that's kind of, again, the reason why I'm still kind of figuring things out myself. And I guess the last thing that I really want to like emphasize is that medical school really is about working together with like others. Um, and that includes your classmates, peers, and things like that. A lot of like the things that we do at, in medical school, I think are very team oriented. So for example, not all of our exams are individual. Like sometimes we have team exams. And in general, I think it's just more effective, I think to learn like a lot of like medicine with other people. Um, you, you guys can like test each other, share mnemonics that might may or may not be effective, help explain like very difficult topics and, and, and things like that. So for me personally, I found that working together um, with kind of like a group of friends has like really been super effective for me. And I, I do really want to point out that this is kind of like in contrast to my previous video where I kind of talked about that, you know, during undergrad specifically for my STEM courses, I found it more effective to work alone. In medical school, it's really not like that. I felt it's a lot more challenging to like truly like understand all of like the topics in medical school just by yourself and by, you know, kind of like working with others, like whether it be students or teachers and things like that, it makes the process just a lot more manageable and like easier to understand. But yeah, those are some of the study tips that I have so far. Obviously things are gonna change, you know, um, as I get better at medical school, I think. I haven't failed any exams yet, so we'll see whether or not that changes. But I hope that's a helpful video. Um, let me know what your guys' thoughts are in the comments below. Um, and otherwise I'll see you guys in the next video.